On June 15, 1859, on San Juan Island, also known as Bellevue Island by the Hudson Bay Company, an American farmer named Lyman Cutler found a large black pig in his garden eating his potatoes. Cutler was so angry that he took aim and shot the pig, killing it. Well, that pig was owned by his neighbor, an Irishman named Charles Griffin, who was employed by the Hudson's Bay Company to run the sheep ranch on the island. Cutler tried to soothe the situation by offering to Griffin what he thought was a fair price as compensation for the pig, $10, equivalent to around $300 US dollars today. But Griffin was extremely unsatisfied with the offer and demanded the American pay $100, equivalent to around $3,000 today. Cutler thought the Irishman's reply was ridiculous. He then refused to pay anything and said he should not have to pay for the pig anyway because the pig had been trespassing on his land. A widely reported account of the event was that when Griffin asked why Cutler shot the pig, he responded with, it was eating my potatoes. And Griffin replied with, it is up to you to keep your potatoes out of my pig. But this argument was about to blow up to be more than just a civil dispute between two individuals. See, the San Juan Islands, where the pig killing took place, was disputed territory between the United States and the United Kingdom. But before I get into how this escalates, let's go back exactly 13 years prior to the day the pig was killed. This was the day the two countries signed what was called the Oregon Treaty. This treaty was supposed to resolve the Oregon boundary dispute by dividing the Oregon country between the United States and Britain. The Oregon country was the predecessor to the United States modern states of Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and parts of Wyoming and Montana. The treaty says the border is along the 49th parallel of north latitude to the middle of the channel, which separates the continent from Vancouver Island, and thence southerly through the middle of the said channel, and of the Strait of Juan de Fuca to the Pacific Ocean. What is north of this line today belongs to Canada's province of British Columbia. However, there are actually two straits that could be called the middle of the channel. Haro Strait along the west side of the San Juan Islands, and Rosario Strait along the east side. There was still some uncertainty about the geography of the region when the treaty was signed. Available maps of the region at the time were not exactly clear. Like this map by George Vancouver, published in 1798, and Charles Wilkes' map, which was published in 1845, though a little more reliable. But in both cases, Haro Strait is not fully clear. In 1856, the US and Britain set up a boundary commission to resolve the border dispute, and both sides presented solid arguments. The British claim the channel specified in the Oregon Treaty must have three key qualities. Number one, it must separate the continent from Vancouver Island. Two, it must carry the boundary in a southerly direction. And three, it must be navigable. They also pointed out that even U.S. maps displayed the San Juan Islands belonging to the British, with the border drawn through Rosario Strait. Take a look at this one by John C. Fremont. It was actually produced and published by the U.S. government. The U.S. argued that southerly in the treaty was meant to be understood in a general sense. Second, they argued that Rosario Strait did not separate the continent from Vancouver Island, but the San Juan Islands from the other islands right off the mainland coast. And third, that navigability was not relevant to the issue, but even if it was, Haro Strait was the wider and more direct passage. The commission was unable to settle the dispute. Which brings us back to the pig shooting. Because the American and Irishman couldn't come to an agreement, and in the years prior, the US and UK couldn't settle the border dispute, it created a situation where British authorities saw this as a crime committed on their territory and threatened to arrest the American for the killing. American settlers called for military protection. Captain George Pickett, along with 66 American soldiers and the USS Massachusetts were deployed to protect the island from the British. Yes, the same George Pickett that would later lead the bloody Pickett's Charge in the American Civil War. The British were concerned that Americans would quickly begin settling the island with more citizens as an attempt to make a more legitimate claim. So under the command of Captain Jeffrey Hornby, the British sent three warships. Both sides were ordered to not fire unless fired upon. Pickett fired up his soldiers by telling them, we'll make a Bunker Hill out of it. If you're not familiar with Bunker Hill, it was a bloody battle in the American Revolutionary War, in which the British won but incurred significantly more casualties than the Americans. For several days, the British and U.S. soldiers exchanged insults, each side attempting to persuade the other into firing the first shot, but discipline held on both sides. General George B. McClellan, George Pickett's West Point classmate and lifelong friend, claimed that General William S. Harney, Pickett's commander at the time, and Pickett purposely were trying to start a war with Britain. See, this was just before the American Civil War, 
The thought process that McClellan accused the two leaders of having was that by creating a common enemy, it would bring the North and South together, avoiding a civil war. However, a general named Granville O. Holler, who during the Pig Crisis was a major at the time aboard the USS Massachusetts and later a Union Army officer, disagreed with McClellan's theory. He agreed that they had wanted to start a war, but with the hope of distracting the North so that the South could gain independence. But luckily, news reached DC and London before any shots were fired. Officials on both sides wanted to avoid conflict and acted quickly to de-escalate the situation. They agreed to retain joint military occupation of the island until a final settlement could be reached, but their respective forces to no more than 100 men. The English camp was established on the north end of San Juan Island along the shoreline, and the American camp was created on the south end. When the Civil War did break out, local British authorities lobbied London to take back the entire Puget Sound region, which included the San Juan Islands. But London was not interested in war or taking advantage of the situation. In 1867, the Dominion of Canada was formed. And in 1871, British and American officials met to solve border disputes between the U.S. and the newly formed nation. But they were still unable to solve the San Juan Island dispute themselves. So they agreed to send it to international arbitration and to respect the outcome. German Emperor Wilhelm I was chosen to act as arbitrator. Wilhelm referred the issue to a three-man arbitration commission which met in Geneva for nearly a year. On October 21, 1872, it was decided that the official boundary would be through the Haro Strait, to the west of the islands, in favor of the United States. After 12 long years of military occupation, the dispute was finally peacefully resolved. On November 25, 1872, the British withdrew their Royal Marines from the British camp, and the Americans followed in July of 1874. Today, though for only commemorative purposes, the Union Jack still flies above the English camp, being raised and lowered daily by park rangers, making it one of the few places without diplomatic status where U.S. government employees regularly hoist the flag of another country. What would the United States, or the world for that matter, look like if war had broken out? It's highly possible that the conflict could have caused a butterfly effect, resulting in many unforeseen events and prevented or postponed events that we know as history today. Would the United States Civil War have happened? Or would the southern states have successfully gained independence, allowing slavery to continue for years to come? Would the U.S. still rise to become the global superpower it is today? And would the U.S. and U.K. be such close allies? This is all pretty speculative, but it's hard to imagine a war not having a serious effect on the United States history. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more geography videos. Thank you for watching.